and a couple of rumors were hatching as we're starting. Uh, for example, the rumor that the XR80 is going to be an OLED TV and that maybe Sony is dropping its WRGB OLEDs altogether. Again, rumors, nothing is confirmed. Kasi is convinced that Sony will not have a 2024 LG Display W OLED. We'll see. Maybe, maybe that's true. It wouldn't surprise me. Wouldn't surprise me, which means maybe we'll have a couple of different types of QD OLED or maybe only one type of QD OLED from Sony. But again, that's for the Sony stream coming up in a few weeks. This is the LG stream, but it's somewhat related to LG, right? W OLED is made by LG Display after all, after all. And glad you guys are all here. And since no one is complaining about audio, <laughs> yeah. Well, Brian is in makeup and looking for his 20-year-old boar bristle brush. This thing is a classic. Can't find it, you know. Well, you don't have your boar bristle brush. Can't look good. Sorry. <laughs> or he's on the floor looking at the price, right, of <laughs> the G4. So well, let's get into a few things. Oh, hey, thanks, Giddy. Audio is great. All right, all right. So... This lineup this year, I think LG has done a few things that looks like it's kind of impressive. It has left their impression on me. So we're going to jump right in real quick with their top mini LED. So let's share it with you real quick right here. And one second. At some point, Brian's going to join us. And when he does, he'll jump right in in the meantime. Let's get into the QNID 90T. So it starts at 65 inch, goes up to 75 inch, 86 inch. So the prices are obviously very high. I was impressed by the QNID 90 the last time it was here. What did not impress me, however, was the contrast was slightly weaker than their VA panel counterparts, and it did not have the impact and pop of the ADS Pro panels from Samsung. So I'm hoping this year will do better, and I think it will, and this is why. This is something that's very interesting I want to show you guys. If you scroll down, right, they're doing precision dimming right here. This actually is similar. I don't know how similar it is, but its description is similar to what we saw at the Sony 4000 nit flagship mini LED, right? which is they are also precising, precisely dimming their dimming zones. Now, only two models in this lineup has the precision dimming, right? The QNED 90, which is a mini LED, and surprise, surprise, the 98 inch also has precision dimming. So this is a very pleasant surprise for me, guys, because I think having precision dimming is more important than maybe mini LED. So let's get back so let's get back to, here we go. Yeah, I want to show you that. So here on the 98 inch QNET 89T, many of the publications are saying, oh, it's just a larger 85T. Not the case. It has precision dimming. If you go to the 85T, right here is their 85T. It does not have, it just has local dimming. Now, Local dimming is obviously one step below. And I've seen other publications also confirm that the 98-inch QNET 89T does indeed have Precision Dimming Pro. Now, if it was a mistake, guys, you guys are watching at LG, go ahead and make that correction. But for now, having Precision Dimming Pro will, should do two things. First, it should control blooming better. Possibly, I expect better shadow detail without the black crushing. Specular highlights could be better. And maybe that better contrast I was hoping to see from LG compared to Hisense, TCL, and Samsung. So maybe this precision dimming zone, dimming technology, precision dimming technology will do the trick because it sounds very similar to what Sony is doing with its XR90 this year. So this is 65 inch. Now the pricing sounds at launch. This is absolutely fine, right? $18.99, where do I expect it to be? By Black Friday, probably $13.99, $14.99, around $1,500 at worst, $1,400 at best around there. So we'll keep an eye on that. Now, it's still on the high end. We'll see it's clearly priced to go against the Q 
N90D. We don't have the pricing for the 90D yet, or, well, we kind of do. Uh, that, that's been leaked by many publications, right? But it's not official. But assuming that sticks, then this might end up being slightly cheaper than the QNED 90, not QNED, QN90. I'm getting all confused. The QNED 90T from LG looks to be the better value than Samsung's QN90D. And so we'll see if it performs that much better or not. Now, this year there is no QN95D, just the 90D. So it'll be interesting to see how these go head to head. As far as the 86 inch at $32.99, that's a bit on the high end. Uh, because at the, by the end of the year, by Black Friday, the QN90D will be closer to 2500 2300 and on samsung.com under 2000 will this drop to that level i hope so otherwise everyone's going to go and buy samsung now many of you say wait wait lg has got what it's got dolby vision right so it says right here dolby vision so here's the surprise right i kind of told you guys wait this has dolby vision right hdr dolby vision hdr 10 hlg that what happened here there's no dolby vision anywhere on this page so if you look at the q Ned 89T, there's no Dolby Vision, like HDR10, HLG, and then I, I type a search, right? Dolby Vision for this entire page. You got Dolby Digital right here. There's no Dolby Vision like anywhere. <laughs> so, and this is not the only TV that doesn't have Dolby Vision, right? I go to one step lower, the Q Ned 85T. Not like it's a big deal. I, I'm not saying that it's important. I just find it very interesting that both the Q Ned 89T and right here, the QNED 85T, right? Do a search for Dolby and all you get is Dolby Digital. You go up to HDR and all they have is the HLG, HDR10 right over here, right? No Dolby Vision. Oh, wait, the bat phone is ringing. One second. Let me put myself on mute. I think he may have found his boar brush. Okay, my friends, give me one second. It looks like I have to send our good friend Brian the link again real quick. His Twitter is not working, so he's having a hard time logging on. Now that he's found his boar brush, he can't log on. All right, okay. Hey, thanks for coming by, Jordan. Watch the replay, hang on, good night. Okay, so let's get back to this real quick. You guys, guessing here, do you think it was a mistake that LG is not showing Dolby Vision on either the QNED 85T or the 98 inch QNED 89T and only on the QNED 90T. So I personally don't think it's a big deal if it was intentionally done. If it's a mistake, they have Dolby Vision after all. Okay, great, it has Dolby Vision. But either way, it's not a big deal. I, it's very interesting. I just interviewed a guest uh, yesterday, Greg Lowen, right? He does post-production calibration work for the studios and you know, we went over his own personal TV viewing habits. And I asked him, honestly, is Dolby Vision important to you? <laughs> he started laughing. He's like, I can't tell the difference. So I watch whatever, I don't care. <laughs> if my TV has Dolby Vision, I'll watch it. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Sometimes it, it feels dark to me. He has a, an LG OLED, right? Goes, but I don't care either way, right? I don't buy a TV because it has or doesn't have Dolby Vision. So. Oh, wait, our good friend is here. Let's see, is he ready? So as Brian. I was saying, right, so what I was saying, <laughs> so what happened? What happened? 
Dude, you man, brush? Tw- dude, Twitter, bro. <laughs> sign me out. Sign me into somebody else. I could even. I'm like all this technology. What's up, everybody? Hey, what's up, Brian? Oh, you, don't, you, right. don't Brian for, you don't stream. You miss one week, and all of a sudden, the whole thing shuts down. Like really? Well, well, well you know. Now that you're on, people will start clicking like. Like I, oh, I've yeah, been I'm starving sure. for likes. Like you know, Come hundreds on, of people love. on and. And no one's clicking. Like now that you're here, the likes will start going up. Oh, I'm sure. But What's up, Michael? I, I What's was up, telling Tom? them. What's up, everybody? Remember, we were watching. We were at Sony, and Sony was showing off its precision dimming control on the the new mini LED. That's four thousand nits, right? So, yep. LG has something similar. They call it precision dimming on their mini LED and on their ninety-eight inch QNET 89T. They both have it. Nice. But what's interesting, we were just talking about, is only on the spec sheet, could be a typo, so we'll get confirmation from LG, but on the spec sheet, only the QNED 90T has Dolby Vision. The two models below that, the 89T and the 85T, do not list Dolby Vision, but they list everything else, HLG, HDR10. So, so <laughs> I'm asking the audience, do you guys think this was a mistake? It's a typo, and they're just going to fix it later? Or did they really leave out Dolby Vision intentionally? Brian, what do you think? It's a typo. What? Yeah. Typo? Some, somebody just, just like that VRR Sony. Wait, that was real, actually. <laughs> so, <laughs> someone in Korea is running. Someone in Korea just got their job. Like, like hey, Frank, uh, did you remove the Dolby Vision? I did. All right, yeah, put it back. Oh, my bad. <laughs> I meant to order a cappuccino, and I ended up removing Dolby Vision. Or, or here's the other big rumor you missed in chat. And this is why you guys got to catch the chat, the pre-show, the tailgate, right? So Classy just shared the rumor mill is Sony has indeed canceled OLED. There is no W OLED TVs this year, only QD OLED. That's the word on the street. So oh, wow. Brian, you have a collector's ADL item. ADL is a collector's issue. Is right the now. last, take, uh, right? Yeah. So you and Lisa are like, we have the last. Wow, that um, doesn't make any sense, but okay. <laughs> and Mizu, no, no, no. There is Dolby Vision Hi, on. The LG OLED. See, this is how the rumors start. <laughs> on the QNED, we're on QNED still. On the spec sheet, right? Like right here. I'm going to pull up right now so you guys can see, right? Right. So let's let's do this. So on so on the 90T, there's Dolby Vision, right? However, here there is no Dolby Vision on the 89T, and on the 85T, there is no Dolby Vision, just HDR10 and HLG, and so people are saying, oh, it must be a mistake, it must be a typo. It could be. But then again, who would have thought Sony would no longer support or would no longer source from LG Display the WOLED if that ends up holding? Yeah, I don't, I don't, I can't say, I mean, I don't have any information. Everybody has gone dark for a lot of us. So, uh, hey, SD, yeah. yeah, the XR80 is Hi, QD OLED. So the rumor is SD, the XR80 is QD OLED, not W OLED. But again, it's a rumor. So Classy right here. And and I'm I don't know either way. I'm just throwing that out there. Classy believes that there is no W OLED at just QD based on the sizes and whatnot. But you know, SD, you too have your ground, your ear to the ground. Go out and let's find out if Sony indeed is not going to have W OLED this year and only QD OLED. I really don't know. Uh, I'm going to have to ask Sony when I see them in some point in the future. At some point, uh, you're going to have to get Rob Brennan on the bat phone, Brian. No, he does. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, you know something's going on because I don't have any access. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, this is Brian. Brian has a list of questions for Sony. He yeah. calls all his Sony contacts. And when he gets back, <laughs> it, it, an emoji of crickets, just crickets. Yep. I'm like, wow, crickets. did that actually go through? That go through? I guess it didn't go through. <laughs> hey, Angelo Ginos, thank you for the super chat. Looking for an 85 inch TV in current market. I favor Samsung. I reached out to Brian to purchase the Q, <laughs> purchase his Q in 95C. So, 85 inch current market right now. So, you're not going to wait, right? Right now, you definitely have to get the Q and 90C or the Q and 85C. The 95C is probably going to be hard to get, probably expensive because it is at special dealers only, custom installers. You can reach out to Robert Zone. I don't know if you're going to get a good deal, but I'll tell you. The QN90C at the Samsung.com website, you can get it for 2000 or a little bit less than 2000 At Best Buy, it's just above 2000 I suggest looking at the QN85C because you can get that for just under 2000 
that's a really good buy. I mean, it's a great TFE for that price. The, yeah, if you favor Samsung, 85C, 90C, go for it. The VA panels, great contrast. Everyone who has it really likes it. Let us know what you end up getting, Angelo. Yeah, Angelo, I never actually purchased it, so that was... Well, he wanted to, and then he ended up getting that... You wanted to buy mine. Um, you can buy it from Robert. He may still have it. Um, it would be an open box, but see, hit him up directly. He may still have it. I never yep. purchased it. I mean, I was close, but I got the ADL instead. Hi, Lisa. How are you, my friend? Uh, she was waving so hard that her arm fell off. Now, now she's going to have to try <laughs> waving it again. Yeah, it's been a long day, <laughs> but I'm here. Why am I so close and you're so far? What the heck's going on with her position? No, no, no. I can do that. No, no I have a Zoom. Watch this. That Lord of the Rings. There we go. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, oh what's up, oh, Papi? Oh, there you go. Do you, guys go, catch that go picture? Do you guys get that picture of me, KG, and Brandon together? People thought that was funny. Yep, yep. All right, so we're talking about LG. So catch me up. So, uh, Tech, uh, I call him Tech, I see his name. Tech KG agrees classic. with me. He doesn't think it's a typo. It looks like Adobe Vision is not going to be on the QNET 85 or the QNET 89. And again, between you and I, I don't think it's a big deal. I, I think if people don't care, it adds more problems than it solves, right? All the TVs above a thousand, above even eight hundred dollars, right? If you take TCL and Hisense into consideration, the way they do HDR10, phenomenal already. Adding Dolby Vision doesn't do much, and if you are a TV maker, right, and you got your engineers out there, and they're watching streaming, Netflix, comparing TVs, comparing Dolby Vision and HDR10, and they're like, you know, Samsung's not wrong. It all looks the same, or. Yeah. It may even look slightly brighter in HDR10, but it's not worse. And at best, Dolby Vision looks slightly different, right? Slightly different. But unless they're side by side, it's indistinguishable. If you walked into one room, saw Dolby Vision of that same content, walk into another room, blink a couple of times, oh, it looks the same. And I think this ends up being very interesting because if LG continues with this theme, how many other TV brands will follow suit? I know Sony has no end to troubles with Dolby Vision, right, Brian? Yeah. From the A9G, which did not even have TV-led Dolby Vision. It was too dark, it was unusable, and all their TVs made in 2019 had the problem. And then in 2020, they added the Dolby Vision chip, still looked terrible. 2021, it started looking better, but it wasn't until the A95K did Dolby Vision look pretty good out of the box. But even now, the A95L continues to struggle with Dolby Vision, and this is a lot of money and resources to fix something that should be working out of the box because that's the promise of Dolby Vision for consumers. But for the TV makers, if they're going to spend millions, and forget the licensing, all right, let's put that aside, the resources required to get Dolby Vision to work. How about just lowering the price of the TV, right? I mean... Get rid of Dolby Vision, drop the TV price by $200, not because of the license, because you saved on resources to get the darn thing to work. So, I, yeah, LG, big. I applaud you. Please continue with that. I, I'm not a big fan of Dolby Vision. I mean, if it's there, great. But if yeah. it's not, we save money across the board. You guys well, save time and engineering. Well, and for Dolby Vision, I mean, that was something that since about 2016, we all rushed and wanted and needed. Uh, the realities of it, its implementation have been very flawed. And for some mm -hmm. people, it's all they can choose. So they're stuck. They have to go around it with a streaming device. Uh, for us, it's really, I'm very happy the QNED line is back. I thought that was a big hole in their lineup. I thought it was too reliant on their OLEDs. Having the QNED back, the AK, the large one, hopefully they go with the 100 inch or 98 inch. I think it'll be a huge winner. That's where the um, industry's going. Mm. Oh, wait, I, I misread KG. He doesn't, he thinks, I think it's not a typo. Oh, wait, I didn't know the QNED 80 didn't have Dolby Vision. That tells you how much I know. Oh, we didn't spend a lot so, of time with there those. you have it. Yep. Now, let's, let's give it some balance. Some people do like Dolby Vision, and, and Paul has a good point. HDR10 is often too bright. Dolby Vision looks more natural. So, Paul, here's something you have to consider. If a TV is in filmmaker mode, and that filmmaker mode is close to accurate, right? HDR10 and Dolby Vision must look identical. They both follow the same calibration against the same EOTF curve. Dolby Vision, the average picture level, right? It cannot be above 
what is demanded by the source. So if the source is demanding it to be bright and HDR10 gets it right and Dolby Vision is dimmer, that means Dolby Vision got it wrong and vice versa, right? If it's supposed to be dim and Dolby Vision gets it right, <laughs> the HDR10 got it wrong. So filmmaker mode is supposed to get it right or close to right. One should not be brighter than the other. Now, the HDR10 specular highlights might be a little bit brighter. And when I say a little bit, side by side, I can barely see it. That's not something that's going to annoy you at all. Uh, so now, Dolby Vision could arguably look darker because there's issues, right? The Hisense has issues getting Dolby Vision right. Now, on the Hisense, Dolby Vision is too bright. <laughs> so depending on your TV monitor, you could be too bright, right? So Paul, let us know what TV you have because the Hisense watcher is like, wait, my Dolby Vision is way too bright. And on the A95L, slightly too bright as well. So it's just, just something to think about. And, and that's another issue. Every TV does Dolby Vision differently. Whereas their HDR10, they all look similar in filmmaker mode among all the TVs. So this makes me think that HDR10 actually is easier to get accurate than Dolby Vision. I know, I'm just hammering on Dolby Vision today, but I, I just can't help myself. <laughs> the bright, no, I don't know if anyone's heard your opinion on Dolby Vision. What are your thoughts? I mean, we've talked about it again. It was something that I wanted for years, uh, but I wanted it because I wanted that 4,000 nit LED to push it. Um, typically, I didn't like it. Oh, to be honest, I didn't like the implementation on some of the cheaper TVs. If they had it, it was too dark. I didn't like that it also locked me out of my settings. I can't really change the image all that much. You'd have Dolby Vision bright or dark or vivid. Um, LG would allow you to still change the settings. They had a Dolby Vision standard, so at least I liked that they did that. But with uh -huh. most companies, you were pretty hampered by it. And actually using Samsung, especially since the QD OLED, I didn't miss it. So um, it's one of those things you think you want to have just to have that box checked. But in reality, it's not something I could care about. So yeah. it's not a big deal to me. You know, I want the best picture quality possible. Agreed. And, uh, yeah, it shouldn't be. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's not a big deal for me either. If it's there and it works, great. If it's there and it doesn't work, then I'm annoyed <laughs> because well, they, sometimes well, I think you can't like, turn it off. I think like we've said, they, it's something they started tacking on to things. To where Netflix, everything had Dolby Vision all of a sudden. Yeah. It wouldn't look very good. They just kind of, hey, 3D, cool. Dolby Vision, cool. Yep. So, um, but for me, I know we're talking about LG, this this stream. Um, you know, my early prediction is GeForce TV of the year. Come at me. GeForce, <laughs> okay. Come at you me. Know, let's hold let's on to it. that. We're going to we're gonna get to this GeForce oh, we segmented? C4, right? My bad, my bad, my bad. My bad. You know, I was warming up on the QNED, but we're going to get there next. Well, 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 and I, mean, I want to address... The Q, with the QNEDs, I'll say yeah. this, though. Again, uh -huh. I was very excited for the QNED lineup. I was not a fan of the Nano Cell. Um, we finally got them. I thought they were a very promising first effort because I saw the mm -hmm. higher-end models, the 8K model. Mm -hmm. And I know Robert... Oh, 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 let me stop you right there. The, the 8K model, the QNED 99T, is coming in May. So it, it hasn't been released yet. It's not on the pre-order list. So many of you were waiting. And I we reached out to Robert, who reached out to his LG contacts and said, no, no, it's coming. So the QNED 99T will be coming later in the year, probably beginning of summer. Yeah, that's great. I mean, I just as we've seen from our coverage and I know video that you and I are working on, is mini LED is back in a huge way. Um, uh, pun intended, size has trumped just quality mm -hmm. and uh the QNED we saw which is actually the lower end we saw it from lg was actually beautiful mm -hmm. that we saw at the uh at their event i like um, them yeah so i think that and, one's and we're going to talk correct. and we're going to talk about pricing to a certain degree as well but before we jump there uh, let's address joker 927's question has lg fixed their dimming problems yet when watching dark movie scenes like dune so he's t he's referring to possibly during my review of the g3 i had issues with crushing, black crushing in Dolby Vision, black crushing HDR10, right? Uh, near black shadow crushed out. And in Dune, during that nighttime attack where they killed people and kidnapped people, uh, the it, it, <laughs> on my G3 is very dark. And I had to go in there and start playing with the black level details to, to raise it a bit. But it can be fixed with calibration though. And that's the thing. Most people who don't calibrate, they're gonna have to you know raise or decrease their gamma or play with it in a way that gets the blacks a little bit higher because out of the box, it, it is a bit crushed. 
And it's not something that you normally fix in firmware. You're going to have to calibrate it out. And that's why Classy is here, right? He's, he's going around the country calibrating people's uh, G3. And uh, thank you for the super chat, Yanko Commander, addressing our comment here. Sony just fired 900 employees from the PlayStation division. I did not know that. That must mean that they're doing really well and they just want to take that money and not share it with anyone who works for them. They're on money saving mode. Maybe they're not, they're not connected. W OLED isn't profitable for them. Okay. They're, so they're not they're not they're not connected that way. They're but the theme though they're, they're different no. divisions, and that's the way corporate is now. You can, you know, it's they're they may have overhired during the shutdown. I mean, it doesn't quite work that way. In Hollywood it does. You had a, a miss Disney will fire people or whatever, but Sony's not letting go uh, of those PlayStation. They're not connected. They've never been connected. But, like that. but there could be an order from above. Everybody, clean up your product lineup. Yeah. This is what we spent in cost. We're going to give you enough budget to have only three TV models or whatever, right? Like let's say we have five TV models in 2023. Too much money. You're down to three. Do what you need to do three or whatever it ends up being, but less TV models, right? And as a result, W OLED. Now, it goes to the second question, Yanko, which is very, very good. Maybe W OLED isn't profitable for them. Or, okay, so QD OLED and W OLED, I don't know what their cost basis is when they source them from Samsung or LG. What I do know is that if they source it from Samsung, Samsung may have given them a sweetheart deal, which means, look, we need to get QD OLED out there. We are going to undercut and sell it to you at cost. Meaning, where LG Display sells their W OLED to make money, Samsung Display may be selling it so low that they're barely making money on it. And Sony's like, okay, you know what? We're going to lock in a contract with you for the next three years. Sell it to us at this cost. We'll take it. Whereas LG Display is like, no, no, no. But then look at what they did with Samsung. LG Display finally relented and sold at a lower cost than they were selling to LG Electronics. <laughs> so ah, the W OLED thing, maybe it goes beyond profit. Because I think Sony is getting a good price for both of them. Because both Samsung Display and LG Display are struggling. So I don't know. I, I think Sony, if they were to choose between OLED technologies, they're just going to go with QD OLED. Oh, to what we're saying, why have, okay, consumers don't recognize the difference. So let me ask you, Brian, as a, cons as a person representing real tech for real people, when you hear OLED, you understand OLED is different. But do you know really W OLED versus Q to OLED? Do you care? As long as it's OLED, what does it matter? And then if Sony's to say, okay, we're just going to sell OLED, if it's only one technology, then which one would it be? Why should they split? their OLED technologies. Why not well, unify into one? Well, I think they're going to follow Samsung's plan and say, hey, look, the 83s are going to be WRGB OLED and the 42s and the 48s. If they want to do it that way, we talked about we don't like that practice because they are catering also to director's intent and the enthusiast is like, who are you going to cater to? Do you want enthusiast or do you want the common person? Samsung is good at kind of placating both of them to a degree. Um, I don't think Sony is in that way. I don't think they would want to do that. I think they'd want to have it pretty clear. Though, mm -hmm. you know, would anybody have known that the X93 didn't have XR clear if we didn't talk about it? Probably not. True. And most people, most people who buy the X95L don't even know it has XR clear. <laughs> because, no, right? yeah, so, yeah, so we probably point out a lot of this, and so do the forums and everything else. I just think that... Um, Let's go back to the PlayStation thing. Uh, right now, the gaming companies are letting off uh, Last of Us. Everyone. Yeah. Everyone. Across so, the board. You know, uh, Respawn, one of my favorites, just canceled a Star Wars game. It's got nothing to do with Sony TVs or even PlayStation 5s. It's got to do with just the industry as a whole that's cutting back. So I appreciate what Yanko is saying. But that's not, that's nothing to do with Sony. I'm sure they're having cuts as well. Um, as far as changing the lineup yes yeah, samsung has something for everyone but i'm sure that's very expensive and they have a lot of inventory left they're confusing actually and to your point i, I know this is going to be a mostly lg stream but samsung is not distinguishing between all the technologies either when we talk to samsung they're like the truth is 
OLED is the best technology. We just call it Samsung OLED. We don't yeah. tell you and we don't care that one is WRGB, one's QD. We don't make a distinction. We have the S95D, it's our top of the top. It uses the best technology. Then we have the S90D and then we have the S85D. They will not tell you which is W OLED and which isn't because it's not important to them. And I think Sony's taking the same approach. Doesn't matter what it is, we chose the best technology. We've chosen QD OLED, we're done. If it's not W OLED, whatever. Maybe next year it'll be W OLED, right? They wanna keep that flexibility, I think. Thanks, great question, Yanko. And Iceman has a great point. Hey, Iceman, nice to see you around. HDR10 is often tracking more accurately than Dolby Vision tone mapping, I agree. Dolby Vision oftentimes under tracks EOTF, if not accurate, also depends on TV processing. So not a lot of people know. TV LED Dolby Vision, there's a Dolby chip on the TV. That's why it's called TV LED. But the TV maker has to make sure that chip is also calibrated. That's why all the different TVs have different things happening on Dolby Vision. So yeah, it's crazy, definitely crazy. And Ryan, thank you for the super chat. LG 2024 pricing is so bad, more so for the C4. Okay, this is the segue I've been waiting for. So to wrap up, I think the QNED pricing, oh, and that's LG would like us to say QNED, not QNED, not but QNED. Q so QNED, I think the pricing is consistent with how Samsung prices their LCD, mini LED, QLED, they're very similar. The question is, do they perform similarly? Now, I'll just leave you with this, guys. The last time I reviewed one of LG's QNED, I loved most things about it, except it had bad corner bleed, which is a QC problem to me, a quality control, because some buyers did not have that issues, but many buyers did. And to me, that's a concern. So hopefully they address that. Otherwise, it, it will continue to be an issue. So Brian, are you planning to have uh, any of the QNEDs for review? I'm gonna try to get at least the 90. I don't know about the 98 inch, but or maybe I'll get the 98 inch, who knows? But for sure, I'll try to get the 90. What are your preferred I mean, I, QNEDs? I haven't, I haven't spoken to LG at all, but I plan on doing whatever Robert gets into the store. So okay. um, it may be the mid to the higher end, which is fine. Um, but I haven't spoken to LG about any any models. Uh, mm -hmm. We'll see. But I mean, you never know. Maybe by that time of the year, it'll be later. I think it's better for them to stagger it that way. Um, but a lot of stiff competition this year from the other LED makers. that are. It's going to be pretty strong. Well, I'll say this. Look at their QNEDs. My... I'm most excited about this 98 inch. I know 7,000 is a lot of money. I don't expect it to stay at 7,000. Just like Samsung's QADC ended up dropping to closer to $5,000. If they can drop this 7,000 to 4,000 with precision dimming, ah, it's so hard though. I mean, so you're getting LG, you're getting its, its solid gaming performance. You're gonna get, well, you're not going to get Dolby Vision if that's important to you, but you're getting WebOS rather than Android or Google TV, which would be on the TCL and the Hisense. So TCL and Hisense will have TVs that cost three to 4000 possibly performing very similarly. How compelling is this TV to you, Brian? Now, at 7000 is a bit expensive, but maybe at four or 5000 for the LG WebOS. What are your thoughts on the 98-inch? 98. I mean, so what do, what do you think is the, we talked about this with the larger TVs, with uh, the QM8 being 15 grand maybe. Where does your large TV start? Where do you take that as being affordable? Do you go to the UAK at 2000? Like well, my point is, no, if no. I, before I answer this. S5, yeah. So the Hisense U76N at 2000, mm -hmm. the TCL S5 at 2000. I've seen the, the TCL S5 I like it. Uh, for 2000 it is solid. I, I have no problems recommending the S5 for most people watching sports, streaming, news, TV shows, all that stuff. It's good enough. It, it, is, it definitely outperforms its $2,000 price point at 98 inches. I have to remind you guys, you're getting a 98 inch TV. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I, seeing it in person, I was like, I keep in, you know, pinching myself. This thing's $2,000. This basically performs better than a TV I really liked, which was the, the original 6 Series from 2019, 2020. You're getting better performance than that at a 98-inch size for two grand. Now, 
how much better is the QNED? So I'll, I'll give you a few things. One, it's probably got its gaming act together. It's probably solid gaming. I haven't, you know, we haven't seen it, but LG, they take great pride in that. Their web OS will be normally snappy. Their image processing predictably should be better. TCL has, it, it has image processing that is to spec. It's not anything to write home about. It works well enough. I expect this to have better image processing, better motion settings, more motion settings. I've always liked LG's motion settings. TCL does not have many motion settings. You get what you get. You either like soap opera or you don't. Deal with it. LG, you can play with the motion settings. And I think that's where it stands out is if you like tweaking your settings, this could be the TV to get. But for most people, they're not going to look at settings. They will be very happy with the TCL S5. Now, when you say that, though, that's the problem with these other TVs being so cheap. You go back to the ah. common person. If they're uh -huh. looking at they're shopping and they see the LG, they're going to go, ah, that's the problem. Because then they're also not in store to be able to say, look at a Costco. Oh, here's the 98. Oh, here's another 98. You don't have that. So it's going to be a really kind of a hard sell for them. Um, also being known that they, they took away a year where they could have really spent more time fleshing out the QNET. I wish they didn't take that year off from them by carrying uh -huh. them over. I wish they uh -huh. would have fleshed that out. Of the, I like the TV, um, but it's going to be. Then again, 96, I mean, I'm just remembering $6,000 is not expensive for a TV that size. <laughs> so uh, it's just that TCL and those guys are killing it with the phone, with the money by just driving yeah. the price down so low. I mean, they're actually killing everybody with that, which is a shame because they have to make money. I, I agree. I now, you. before we get into OLED, I'm going to segue into this OLED. Somebody was watching Linus, question. apparently. <laughs> really? That was, Linus, that was a Linus video. That she's talking um, about, I think. So Mizu asks, FOMO, I was wondering, have you or Brian bought the Ultimate TV, the Fisher or Flanders, Flanders Scientific OLED? It came do full 36 bits, so it should be able to do lossless video and match 35 millimeter. So this, so uh, Flanders Scientific has their OLED monitors. Here's the thing though, they are not using third generation QD OLED. So when I heard that, I was like, oh, Flanders. No, thanks. <laughs> so if, if I'm going to pay that much for a TV, I want the latest and greatest third generation QD OLED that could hit 3000 nits. So that, if I get one, it would have to be that. So for sure, I'm not going to get the current model. Not to dissuade any of you who need it for actual grading of movies and stuff, but for me, you know, if I'm going to pay that much, I'll just wait. But for everyone else who the studio is paying for it, ah, go ahead and get it. Tell us how you like it. All right, so now we're talking about the pricing of the C4 and the G4. So across the board, everything has gone up $100, right? And if we take a look at the actual prices here, and let's talk about that. We're going to start off with the G4. I think the $100 increase on the G4 is not a big deal. What is a big deal to me just overall is not so much the price increased by 100. I mean, if it stayed the same, it went up 100, it went down 100, I don't think it's a big deal. The fact that it didn't go down significantly at all. So if you have to look at the trend, right? Hisense and TCL, every year, they are attacking prices by 15% every year and raising the performance level of their TVs to an incredible point. And it just shocks me that LG has stopped aggressively reducing the price of its OLED. And I think they're at a point where they cannot do it anymore. So it's not so much greed. I think they've hit a point where, look guys, this is as low as we can go. If we go any lower, we might as well just not make TVs anymore, right? And just give our whole TV department to TCL and Hisense to take over. So this is as low as it's gonna go. But don't you, before LG, you, but don't you think to yourself, well, the prices of what OLEDs used to cost mm -hmm. not that long ago, it's been reduced so much. The The efficiency in being able to make them and the cost of making them has not gone down. So they're just losing money because the TVs were, I mean, I'm telling you, 77 inch C7 was 15 grand. So the fact that these TVs are being cut lower and lower and lower, I think their margins have to be, it's just very hard for a couple. I, I can't say it's greed. I would just say they used yeah. to be able to make a certain amount of money and without the other lineups to sustain it, that's gotta be uh -huh. hard. They can't look at a mini led lineup and say, okay, at least we have the eight K this, they have a Z series, which is very expensive. The M series, they have a lot of very high end, beautiful TVs, but 
I don't know. It's 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 they're just in a tough spot, even though I think they're gonna have the best TV in the year of the year. <laughs> so yeah. I keep saying that. <laughs> and we're gonna go into the prices of each of these sizes in a second after some super chats. Thank you, Anime Facts 7227. Will TVs ever offer a feature to improve the stutter effects of 24p content? Uh, has on TVs with fast response time. So the answer is they're working on it. I know that Pixelworks has their True Cut Motion, mm -hmm. which was which is a software-based metadata that's on in the content itself, and then matches to your TV. So your TV firmware can be updated so that it can then read the software-driven metadata. So that as long as your TV is at least 60 hertz and above, the 24p content will look more cinematic with less stutter without introducing soap opera. That's in the horizon. I know they're working on it. I'm, I'm getting leaks here and there about what TVs are using it, but I, we cannot share what streaming content is using it, but you guys are seeing it, right? Vision Pro is now using TrueCut uh, graded software and they're trying to use it. Uh, I think Apple TV. I mean, a lot of these releases, they're trying to get TrueCut into the content side so that the TVs can then possibly upgrade their software. It doesn't require a chip, is my understanding. We interviewed the Pixelworks TrueCut team last year or two years ago. We're close. We're getting very close to eliminating stutter. So thank you for that super chat. And Tech with KG says, no Dolby Vision and no Dolby Atmos is unfortunate. Thank you for that super chat, KG. But the problem for QNED85 or QNED85 is that it's an edge-lit TV. Actually, it is a direct view dimming zone full array local dimming zone now Which one is the qned 85t so what was the one that. we saw at the show the one we saw at the show was the 85 inch that was direct, that was edge lit or direct that was edge lit yeah that, that one was edge lit yeah this that one has local that. dimming but there's one below that so maybe you're talking about the one below that uh, kg yeah that one looked good we saw the 86 inch it, it looked fine yeah just like the Crystal 7, 8, 9,000 all look great as well as the Saw KG. In, in the room. Saw KG. So, so, so the 85T does have local dimming. Now, how many dimming zones? Uh, we're not counting. We don't know yet. We'll find mm -hmm. out. Hey, are you going to get one, KG? Let us know. Thank you for that, buddy. C4. Okay. Ah, so let's get back to LG right here. C4 normally will face stiff competition this year. So, this year, the, <laughs> what last year? So, Getty, forget what you what you said, Brian. Forget this year. The S90C, last year's TV. You all know how much we, everyone who has it, loves it. If you know, you know. My editor's choice of 2023. If the C4 is only incrementally better than the C3, the S90C is similarly better than the C4 as it was better than the C3, C4 has a problem going against a 2023 TV. So what is LG's solution? You gotta lower the price. I, it's okay you don't have MLA, but let's look at the pricing right now. So if we go down, 97 inches, 24,000. Okay, that's, that's no surprise, obviously. If you have the money, M3 or M4, G4, 25,000, 97 inch, you pay for it. I think the M4 is going to be like 30000 or something like that. The big disappointment is the 83-inch, and now we predicted this, right? 6500 It's like, boom. We said between 6000 and 7000 split it right in the middle, 6500 Realistically, it's going to be under 5000 by Black Friday. So I'm you're probably paying... Pre I'm definitely pre-ordering that. <laughs> yes, you are. You're like, <laughs> Dude, I was playing... how much more can you charge me? <laughs> I was playing yesterday, and I was like stuck at 120 hertz. I'm like, I use that 144, baby. I need it. I need it. I found on my own stream. I did a video on this. <laughs> you need it to be brighter, my friend. What's happening? I want that 144. I want that. No, it, see, this is the problem with the C series. I want that no, 144. the 144. Wait, so let's talk and about I that want spec that processor, baby. You so, know. Getty, maybe that's how they're separating themselves. Both the G4 and the C4 has 144 hertz. The S90C, the 144. You know, maybe not as solid as it could be. I don't know. Some people complain. I don't PC game enough to say 144 is important to me at all, but it's on the one on the G4 and the C4, and that may be important to you. Now, 6,500, I think, for 83 inch, I personally think there's no one else competing with them at that brightness level. 
you're paying that premium. If you don't need it to be that bright, get the C3 83 inch, right? Pay under 4,000, you're done. Or get the S90 C83 inch and pay $2,600. Dude, people are paying at the Samsung website right now, $2,450 for the 83 inch S90 C, which is essentially a C3 with uh, Tizen, right? Uh, we, we had a medical worker, first responder, he logged in, offer a member, 24450 plus a soundbar bundle for like another $600, whatever, right? Crazy, crazy awesome pricing. So if you don't need that super brightness, you can get it for under 3000 You don't need to pay this much. This is for the MLA, brightest OLED at 83 inch size at 144 hertz. But Brian, how important is the MLA to you? I know you, you just said 144. Would you pay the 65 inch for those who are not gamers, but they yeah. want it to be brighter? Because well, I want yeah. the MLA, which is improved. I also want the new processor. Mm -hmm. So I want that new upscaling. So it's, it's, it's let's talk I, about that. I didn't, is it I didn't not there? Did I miss? Did I, did that no, much change? No, we didn't talk about that. So it's not just <laughs> so, it's not just an MLA situation. It's not just a brightness. True. I don't I don't predict the G4 winning because it's brighter. Right. It is brighter. It's the only mm -hmm. game in town. The S95 has got a matte finish, which does compromise it, um, even though I, I've changed my tune on it a little bit, which we'll discuss at one point in the future. Um, it is compromised. It's not going to be anywhere near as contrasty as the MLA. Um, the processor is important. Um, is 144 hertz very important? It's not. But I do have a graphics card that can utilize it. So, so Brian, before you go any further, Talk to me, are, baby. Let's go and get me. You're literally me. answering Alonzo's question. Alonzo, who has the best gaming TV between LG and Samsung in 2024? All right, 2023 is past. Let's not talk about it. 2024 G4 C4. Now, you mentioned MLA and 144 hertz. 144 hertz is on the G4 and the C4. Yep. MLA is only on the G4. How does this make the LG? potentially the better gaming TV than the Samsung S95D. And I'm going to take the Samsung's S95D with its special strength in response to you. But go ahead, go so, for so it, I, and what we'll, I we'll love, try to balance it. What I love about what they both do, and I know nobody cares about this, but it's true, is having those separate presets is important. So if you go into one, mm -hmm. of, the, you go into one of the presets and you decide to enable, um, at least for Samsung, let's say you go static on one, you know, you change the dome tone mapping, you put advanced contrast, all that stuff is there to be toggled. You can't do that on the Sony behind me. A lot of the options are grayed out. Samsung and LG both leave them open. Then you go to another preset and it's reset, meaning it's not all universal. You can actually have different presets. That's important for the kind of gamer you are. Um, having that flexibility for LG, having HGIG is important where it's supported. You know, their dynamic tone mapping looks good. HIG looks good. Dynamic tone mapping off looks good. Now having MLA and having 144 hertz and having true G-Sync, not just a free sync premium dash, whatever, all that stuff does matter to me. So they've always been neck and neck in terms of gaming. And uh, I think that G the, C, uh, the LG is stepping ahead again this year. I think they're taking it back this year. With, and, then, and then the processor... I hope will carry over into movie watching, unlike X or onto gaming, unlike XR Clear, which doesn't really help uh -huh. gaming. I'm uh -huh. hoping the processor helps there. No one answered that question for me, but I think it's going to be the ultimate game machine. You add the brightness, you have HDIG, you also have Dolby Vision still. Samsung uh -huh. doesn't have that. They don't have HDIG. They have a form of something like that. Right, um, right. And they do have G. They don't have that. They don't have that label HGIG, although yes. arguably they have a setting that's very similar. Yeah. And yes, yeah, so okay. while they and while they don't have the G Sync module as Quack Fu is illustrating, it is supports G Sync. We did confirm that it's better supported. It's, than it's, it's G Sync compatible. Compatible, certified. better than last certified. year. Though. They've they've right, improved right. that. So no, yeah. nothing has the module anymore. Some of the monitors might have it. Well, the new one. Think... There's this new G Sync thing that's coming out, but it's not out yet. But yes, yeah. yeah. But these are okay. these are little things. But I do think that the the G series is going to be legit. Now, my response to you was inspired by KG's terrible Switch experience, which was, I can't stand my Switch. I'm on the plane and all I see is my face. The reflection is so annoying. I couldn't play the Switch at all when the plane lights are on. They need to have a matte screen on my Switch, like the S95D. So, if you're gaming in a bright room, 
maybe that anti-glare screen makes a bigger difference than 144 hertz than anything else. Now, in a dark room, LG has the edge. Gotcha. But if you're playing in a oh, yeah. mixed-use room where you got lights all around, I think that matte screen may end up being the game changer for everything. Gaming, because you don't have to deal with the glare. Now, a lot of you hardcore gamers, tell us, do you prefer a matte screen or non-matte screen? Do you play only in the dark? Because I know gamers all have their little preferences, right? But yeah. spec for spec, I think the G4 and the G3 will have the 144, which is important, and Dolby Vision Gaming. But gamers who don't care about that, on the Samsung, we'll probably have the same experience, but I think LG does win the spec wars this year, and the S95D's One Connect box, people still complain. Well, okay, actually, I take it back. Some have said that NVIDIA's firmware update has maybe ended some of those dropouts, so possibly that was an NVIDIA issue as well, but we'll see. But at the end of the day, the G4 and the C4 as a gaming TV is very compelling if you have MLA on the G4 because it helps maybe solve the brightness issue. The C4's brightness does not compare to the S90C, nor does the C3 brightness compare to the S90C for SDR gaming. What are your thoughts about SDR gaming, Brian? Or did that was that not an issue for you at all? You, you felt it the was brightness not, was I mean, fine. It was not a huge issue for me. I mean, I game on the A80J and the A80L, so it didn't bother me. I didn't notice a okay. massive difference with it. Um, so it wasn't okay. a big campaign. What I didn't like with the G3 was they had locked us out of those presets for the first. Well, they weren't locked out when I did my first uh, look at it, but they were later. So they had some issues with it. Um, but mm -hmm. the C series, what bothers me most is not just the lack of MLA. It's the old processor. So I really wanted at least the new processor and some form of MLA to give it a little punch. It'll still be great, but it's kind of trending on its own name of being a popular model. I wish they would boost it with it because I think the two of them boosting would, would give uh, QD OLEDs a run for their money, especially this year. And, the, and for clarification, the matte screen is really not a matte screen. It's just the way their layer is, is beyond matte. So uh, we have a lot of thoughts on that, which we'll be able to talk about in a few months. But, uh, <laughs> few you know, weeks. but it is amazing <laughs> how that kind of stuff uh, shows up, not just in a bright room FOMO, but just a room with some light. Yeah. There's a drawback to it. Which you know, I hung out with KG. We had, KG and I had a discussion about it. So KG, I'm sure, will comment on it when he's allowed to. Um, mm -hmm. But it's uh, I still think the G series is going to be the TV of the year. I think having the 83 inch, um, the new well, process. Well, I, I think I think you're leading to Kelly Kelly's finest demon. Thank you for the super chat. Will the Alpha 11 processor on the G4 OLED TVs be able to compete with Sony's high end OLED models with XR Clear? in terms of upscaling capability. So I think you predicted, and you are predicting, the G4 will win this year in terms of image quality, shootout, head-to-head -head comparisons because of this Alpha 11 processor. Mm -hmm. And specifically, for the first time, the G4 will be able to apply their AI processing to streaming content, copyright content. In the past, you have this amazing AI that you can only apply to personal videos, right? Home videos, whatever. But you couldn't apply it to streaming or copyright material. Now you can, and in a shootout, all we use is copyright material for comparisons and judging, right? You thinking that is making the difference then in your decision? So or in, in your, yes, your, yes, yes. you believe, yes. Yeah. So why I have faith in that is, we're gonna go back a little bit. Sony was ahead of LG at a certain period of time, and then they had that little slowdown where the C2, LG literally caught up to them in processing. We saw it with the A90J versus the C2. LG caught up, and then XR Clear came out. Now, XR Clear is kind of taking a break as far as their processor, not releasing a whole new processor, at least from what we know for upscaling. They're going to keep refining uh -huh. it. So it's like the um, Alpha Gen 11 is going, Alpha 11 is going after last year's XR Clear. Does that make sense? It's like you're going uh -huh. after last year's thing. So I think they've caught up. Um, I think it is something special because they're holding it back to just a couple models. They want to separate it. I think they want to show it off. They don't want to delineate. They don't want to make it too subtle. They want it to stand out and make that on their premium TV. So maybe next year the C-Series will have it, but I think the um, the 11 will compete, if not surpass XR Clear. Right. 
And we're going to have a special guest join us in a sec as, as we wrap up this G4 and go into the C4 discussion. As far as pricing, I think it's fine that they're holding steady on pricing. That's what Samsung is doing. So just to be fair to LG, they may raise $100 or so, but Samsung premium TVs and their OLEDs similarly priced, right? So you know they're just playing that they're staying within range of their competition. And I think Sony will be more expensive out of the door, out of the gate as well. So the G4 being their flagship best OLED TV you can get, the pricing is fine. The question is, where will it be at the end of the year? And Iceman guess who there. we have here today? Robert, thank you so much for coming on. Oh, you came just in time. What's happening, Robert? How are you? Thank you. Thank you for having me today. Thank you so much. Good to see you. Hey, Robert. So, a, a, any updates from LG? So, we're, we're today is a special, you know, we're, we're going into all the different models coming out. And I haven't gone into dates, the release dates, or anything like that. But do you have any last minute updates from LG that you can share with us? Well, or, count, or, or launch dates? Count 31 days from today, and it's oh. scheduled to be shipping on Monday, April 1st. Okay. So, if so all they can call you. Scheduled, as all goes as scheduled. The very, uh -huh. very first allocation of C4, G4, and by the way, the 77-inch Z3 will nice. be launching in the U.S. for the first time the week of April 1st also. The 88-inch okay. will come out, but it'll be a month or two later in the early summer. And it sounds like the 8K QNED 99T is, is coming out in May, beginning That's of summer. Correct. Thank you for remembering that. That's right. Okay. That's the and... answer, yes. Now, most importantly, price, we know at early in the year, if you want to jump on it early, you always pay the most. That is, is value. Is Value Electronics offering any kind of store credit, discount? Because I know LG is offering 5% pre-order store yes. credit for their thing. What are you offering to beat LG? Thank you. Well, we ship nationwide for free, and we don't collect tax, but we also have a 5% store credit as well towards anything that you want to apply it to. Uh, so we're the same in that scale. And when thinking about doing something a little extra, you always you always encourage me to do something special. Yes, always do something special, Robert. Yes, yes <laughs> thank you. And I like that you encourage that. Because, hey, you're on the side of the consumer. And that's a good thing. And that's a good thing. And I am as well. Yes, thank you. Okay, but anyway, so, nice, another nice big upgrade here. Who would ever think that I I am very impressed technology as much as they are, you know? But I love that they, they included the precision dimming technology on yeah. the 89 on the 98 inch, even though it doesn't have mini LED. I think that's more important than mini LED. I, I find that mini LED to be more of a brightness thing. If you need it extra bright, more efficient, but that dimming zone control is yeah. everything. Now, oh, Classy brought up a question. I think it's kind of interesting. So AI will be disabled at the shootout. So Classy is referring to the G4's AI system that can be toggled on and off. But then my response, Classy, is, is it fair? Because you cannot disable the AI XR clear on the Sony. I'm gonna Come turn on, it back man. On. I'm gonna go buy a TV. Turn it back on. <laughs> you can't. You can't. You can't. <laughs> Flip the switch. <laughs> How can Sony be running its XR clear and we turn off the AI? And back out, you're saying. But I, I say turn it on and off and see what the judge is like, right? If the like judge it. is like with it on, let's, let's try to look at it both ways if we can. But we'll see. But yeah. come on, because if Sony won't let you turn, and I know on the Samsung you can't turn anything off. It's like almost all the processing is always running all the time. So maybe G4, the G5 will learn from this, and the G5 is like, oh, yeah, all right, fine. You can't turn it off on the G5 either. We'll see. We'll see what happens if it comes back to bite them. I'll see if we connect it to the light switch, and I'll just go in the back and be like, oh, turn it on. <laughs> turn it off. And, and Classy is absolutely right, though. AI processing makes it less accurate. If it is, it will be disabled. If it's not, it would hurt it. And I thought it would have hurt the Sony. It didn't. The Sony won. So I don't know. It like, actually would have hurt it if we didn't do the out of the box um, streaming part. True. It true. It helped it. in the streaming. So, Classy, keep it on for streaming, right? Because I know I, I recognized it was less accurate with the XR Clear, and you couldn't disable it. And But I think overall it's still won because of streaming. So, maybe leave it on for streaming so that it could at least match the Sony on streaming content. So, we'll see.
<laughs> and Don, hey, really, Robert, it's shipping on April Fool's Day. Now, Are we really going to get funny? it? <laughs> I know. Please forgive me. I know. I didn't even want to say the date, but that's what promise. It told me. It told me. I, know. <laughs> I love the, it. The week of Monday, April 1st. Now, KG, KG brings up a good point. 2023 TVs are still relevant and very competitive. Yeah. Do you have any 2023 TVs you want to get rid of, sell, dirt cheap, on promotion? Because I'm still recommending the X95L and the X93L. I yeah. think they're amazing TVs, yeah. uh, but at the beginning of the year, last year, it was too expensive. Now, are you? do you have any promotions? And the X95L, by the way, is very hard to find, even at its pricing. Yes. But what do you have for deals as far as just liquidation clearance deals for your for Valley Electronics? Well, here is the issue. It's always a supply-demand kind of an issue here. Supply is extremely constrained. On which TV? 5-inch X95L, as you well properly said, there are none. There and are there none. there are orders to fill. And they get filled... In two to three weeks, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Two weeks, two weeks, pretty much. And and I'll, I'll tell you guys and this: if you guys, stock. we have plenty in our stock because Sony's mm -hmm. always good to us, and whenever they're available, we get allocated. So if we don't have orders to direct ship, we take them. So I have a good supply in our stock, and we have it on display. And I am amazed by that TV, and to think that Sony is exceeding it. I would never even dream of having the nerve to ask them to make a better TV. So wait to see and it. to think that they're exceeding uh, it by a lot with the 2024 mini LED and some uh, secrets I'm not allowed to disclose. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll, I'm going to remind the viewers this. The XR90, which is that flagship that will exceed the X95L, it's going to be very expensive. Yeah. So yeah. I recommend that if your budget is between four and 5000 get the X95L while still available. That's right. That that is a great price That's for great that TV. TV now, if your budget is six thousand or price no object, cost no object, okay, you know what? Wait for the extra ninety. I don't know what the prices are. I'm just saying it's not going to be yeah. below five thousand. That's my guess. Yeah. So Robert has his allocation for the X ninety five L coming in a week or two. Reach out to Robert. Uh, this will be probably the last few allocations, and then you're going to have to pay. Big bucks and the X93L is also a good TV for a little bit for a thousand less than the X95L. So both of those are good Sony TVs for the price. But if you want the best, you're gonna be paying it this year. But yeah, no, I I think KG is right. Sony and LG and Samsung, their 2023 TVs are so good that if you can get those at these prices right now, you gotta go for it. Now, when when he says you don't collect tax, he's paying the tax for you, except if you mm -hmm. live in New York, right? This applies mm -hmm. to everyone out, outside of New York State. Yes. And Robert, love Robert, tech what's, what's the distribute the manufacturer direct ships from us and collects the tax at the wholesale price. Love Tech Lynn. How are you, my dear? And Love Tech Lynn wants to remind Robert, Robert, thank you again for helping oh, me with my you. G3. It was a pleasure purchasing from Valectronics. Robert, Thanks. what's in the store right now? What do you have in the in the showroom at this moment? Yeah. Well, I have um, uh, A95L, G3, um, you know, uh, QN900C, 8K, uh, Z, Z9K. Are they in the showroom or are they in the studio? Uh, most are in the showroom. One or two of those are actually in the studio. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. I set up a lot of 8K TVs in the studio across the street. Yep, nice. Yeah. Sorry, I get over here. I want to compare the 900 seat to the Z9K. Yes, that's right. We have them in the rooms next to each other. Now, um, before we jump to the C4, John Hooper has this very cryptic message, Robert. And now, if you missed our show at the beginning, we we're saying that is this the end of W OLED? Because the rumor is the rumor mill, and I know you may or may not be able to sh to confirm, but I just want to let you know the reason why the audience is a buzz is because it appears that Sony is not going to be selling any W OLED TVs in 2024. They are going all QD OLED. Again, this is a rumor. This is what the buzz is right now. We'll see if the rumor ends up being correct. But if it is. 
What does that mean? Maybe that's why Samsung got a sweetheart deal on the W OLED LG display. The question I'm gonna ask you, Robert, is do you have a preference between W OLED and QD OLED? You've seen both of these technologies, all their stages, from the very beginning of W OLED, almost a decade ago, to the QD OLED. You've been at LG's research facility. You've been at Samsung's facilities. What are your thoughts? I mean, how close are they really, in your opinion? Are, are they so well, far apart? QD OLED versus just WRGB OLED, not micro lens array. Right. Is, is, is more than splitting hairs, but it's not dramatically better. It's moderately better. Uh -huh. Now, LG Display's answer to QD color rendering is to put the micro lens array over there red, green, and blue subpixels, 33 million micro lenses, not 8 million, not 8.3 million, th over the each one. So they, so they help improve color saturation and color volume, just like QD OLED does. So it was a good solution. And it's still marginally, minimally, not quite as good, but it's really close. Is it's splitting hairs at that point, so the micro lens array is a good answer, and the regular RGB OLED is only a modest uh, difference in that it's not as bright and it's not as color mm -hmm. saturated. I think for MLA Sony again, answers all that MLA answers all that, and I think for Sony, and this is kind of addresses what you just said. For Sony, assuming this speculation turns out to be true, the reason they would, they would only choose one technology is. Rather than dealing with W OLED, W OLED plus MLA, and then QD OLED, they could just choose QD OLED and get all the benefits of QD OLED without having to deal with a lesser W OLED without MLA. It just makes it easier for Sony to have a more streamlined lineup. So I think if they were told, hey, clean up your lineup, choose one OLED, whatever it is, we don't want multiple OLED models. Because in the past, right, they had a lesser W OLED, they had a better W OLED with a heat sink, and then this QD OLED comes out. So you have three different types of OLEDs. And if they were to choose one, QD OLED comes closest to that one without having to add one with and without a heat sink. So I can see why they're going with that. Now, on to the biggest concern that many people have, which is the pricing of the LG C4. And again, I thought the G4 pricing is fair as it will match head-to-head mm -hmm. -head with flagship pricing. Mm -hmm. Remember everyone, the G4 has the five-year panel warranty. No other TV maker from any brand offers that and it would cover Brendan as well. That mm -hmm. is unique for the LG G4. I think that definitely contributes to the cost and well worth it. I mean, if you were to eliminate things like Dolby Vision or Dolby Atmos or whatever, Having the five-year warranty is the one thing I would not eliminate, and that is what adds the premium, so be it. That makes sense to me. Yeah. But the C4, on the other hand, does not have the five-year panel warranty, and it's priced, although we're used to this price because it's very similar to last year, it didn't budge much. It feels like it's going to fall behind Samsung's QD OLED and now Sony QD OLED this coming year because they'll be priced very similarly without the flagship side, right? Their mid-range OLED will be very similar in price. And it feels to me that this may be a bit high. So LG, aggressively cut your prices to compete. What are your thoughts? Oh, let me ask you, Robert, as a retailer, do you get a lot of C4 or C3 orders last year or G3 orders? What was the more popular um, model lineup for you? Well, our customer appeal and customer base might be different than the average retailer because I'm one of those geeky nerds and a lot of those other geeky nerds. Right, right. Only the best. Oh, and we do there. the TV shootout <laughs> and I evaluate and I specialize more in the mid to higher end. So we do much more business on the G, but we sell a lot of C3s and C2s were popular and C1s were popular. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's just that our volume is more on the G series. And that is true. I, if you guys don't know, Value Electronics, so Tyrus, here's our chance to talk about Hi, where Tyrus. Value Electronics is located. Tyrus has a bar up in Buffalo. <laughs> so he's down uh, several hours drive from you. So Value Electronics is in Scarsdale. Wasn't aware of Value Electronics before you guys, but I like independent merchants. I'll be giving them my future business, both for my home and my bar. Awesome. And Tyrus likes his TVs. 
big and bold and i think he's going to be getting some nice tvs from you in the future yeah. trust us when we say robert works with you very closely to make sure it happens yeah. and installation all that he's going to make sure it is well installed wherever you are now here's something that i want to hit oh wait let me get to the super chat real quick Bullman, man thank you for the super chat do you think the processor in the g4 will be all part of their ai setting toggle or will it, it be independent expectations compared to a95l so the g4 has multiple toggles right so we've seen it the one thing i really like is specifically they have a director's creators toggle that acts very much like the xr clear that it makes the scene more compelling more engaging mm -hmm. that could be independently enabled disabled they have other ai toggles that does other things but that one specifically is the one that is going to affect the copyright material that we're talking about that one could be independently enabled or disabled mm -hmm. so yes thank you for that super chat and there's this one comment that i thought was worth mentioning someone was talking about having a uak and then he here we go nando mm -hmm. john I had the 100 inch U8K, but I returned it. I picked up the U76 at 2000. I'm extremely satisfied. This is the theme that I, I know it's going to go to the pricing, which is TVs are good enough. For most people, what they see with a $2,000 U76 and 100 inch is so close to the 100 inch U8K that they're like, wait, mm -hmm. why am I paying the extra thousand or 2000, right? And this takes me to where we have LG. What they see from an OLED now is so close to what they see from an LCD TV, mini LED, whether it's Hisense or TCL, or even the lower end Samsung, right? The, the less expensive mini LED. It's like, wait, why am I paying extra for a 75 inch old, a 77 inch OLED when I can get same price 85 inch mini LED and get the same image quality? And I think this is something that LG needs to recognize I understand the G4 needs to be cutting edge. Go ahead and make that your premium lineup. But on the C series, the B series, the A series, they were onto something with the A series. Stop improving your mid tier and your low tier. Drop the prices. Like do whatever you can to focus on, you know, alpha gen zero, right? Whatever you can, lower that price so that people have a reason to choose the OLED. Otherwise, they're going to go bigger because the image quality on quote unquote lesser TVs is good enough. But it's so big that they cannot not go 85 inch, 98 inch. And this is something that this is the year that the OLED TV makers have to recognize that and be willing to do what it takes to keep OLED's growth going. And that's my concern because the G4 is priced fine. But now, if C4, okay, you're priced here, then the B4, you better price it by half. What disappoints me is consistently, the B series is only $200 cheaper. Like, well, why buy the B series at all? I might as well just get the C series. It's only $100, $150 cheaper. Ridiculous, right? Then forget the B series and just give me the A series. That's $500. Like, I think the 77-inch A2 is $1,400. That's what I'm talking about, right? At some point, that 77 inch was 1400, 1500. Now, I can safely say you're competing with a 75, 85 inch mini LED. So, what are your thoughts on the rise of mini LED TVs? Because you carry both models, Robert. How do you address your customer's desire for a large TV? Like, he's how do fine. you steer it? I'll tell you right now, he's fine with it. <laughs> 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 Robert, we always say the TV's never big enough. I tell you, he's fine with it. <laughs> Go well, ahead, Robert. Um, as long as you have a good picture, this is what I do say. Yep. Size trumps everything else. We can talk about all the little differences in fidelity of colors and things like that. But uh, as long as it's a good picture, size trumps it. So I would always recommend uh, in 90% of the cases, go with the larger screen if you have that choice. Mm-hmm. You know, at a similar price or whatever. And um, with that said, also, I can't believe I'm even saying this. Please don't shoot me. And I don't know if this is going to be live or not, is it? 
It's live just, right now. It's, it's, it's just you know us, what? Though. It's, <laughs> only, it's, it's only the three of us and a few thing. people in chat. I don't know who these people I'm are. I'm starting to like some of the mini LEDs. It's only 400 They're people. They're good. <laughs> They're really <laughs> good. <laughs> they are really so, good. So, hey, Robert, I'll, 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 they have near OLED black. They have very little glow in there. Yes, they do. So, so the funny thing, gone. so Robert, the funny thing about your store, though, is unlike a lot of the other retailers, when you do walk in, you see a large LED in Robert's store. It is alluring. The challenge is when you look over your left shoulder, there's an 83-inch LED or OLED. So those mini LEDs tend to not look quite as good when there's a yeah. quality. Because if you're in a Best Buy, for instance, Robert, there's a 65-inch OLED there. And then maybe a bigger, cheap mini LED in your store, you have both. Yeah, you have an 85 inch XLED, but you'll have all these the other beautiful yeah. OLEDs as well. Yeah, let me please add, it really does a lot depends upon ambient light that you that you normally view in. Oh, if absolutely. You're usually in a light controlled room, even in the daytime, an OLED far exceeds it. It wants to be in low ambient light. An LCD almost wants to be in high ambient light. Yeah, so, yeah. You know, a lot of this really depends upon your use case. And um, there are other little elements and attributes. We interview every customer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So but I really love that you have this thing. I love that you have the larger OLEDs, though, there with yeah. a large LEDs burst because that way you can yeah. see the difference in picture quality. Yeah. You know, the pure black, the better detail of the gray. Micro contrast. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You know, and, and when you put them next to each other, you can see it. But you know what? Your eyes and your brain fixes things. And when you buy an LCD that's a decent one and you take it home, you are more than satisfied. And your brain makes the picture right and better even. It really does yeah. fix it. I don't know if there's a way of explaining that scientifically or not. And, and also, people forget that when we do our comparisons, whether I review it or shoot out, it's like pitch dark. Things are in yeah. slow motion. You yeah. freeze frame, you capture the contrast, and you you really have to pick through it to see the differences. But if you're just watching sports, you're like, wait, is that an OLED? Wait, is that an OLED, right? I mean, yeah, some scenes of contrast is obvious, right? But most people, if you take the OLED out, oh, that looks great. Now, right. speaking of a person who doesn't have an OLED, Fat Fatal the Collector, thank Congrats. you for the super chat. Just <laughs> the question. There you go. Damn. He's got both the Q90C and the Q90C, both 85 inch mount or stand. Now, I'm going to say put it on a mount, put it on a wall. I, I like things out of the way. If I put it on a stand, that means I got to have a console that's large enough. I prefer a mount. Guys, what are your opinions on that? Well, Robert? Every single decorator and designer insists that we wall mount. We're not allowed to put a television on a tape countertop. Only pretty things can go there. That's <laughs> <laughs> I'm a stand guy. Second of all, I got to tell you, since we do that a lot, because we're in this beautiful neighborhood here, I must tell you, I prefer it on the wall. I think, and especially an 85-inch large TV, mm -hmm. definitely looks professional and better on the wall. Now, it shouldn't be too high, but we can talk about those things later. Right. Um, I like wall mounting. It looks better. It is neater. Brian, I know you disagree. What are your thoughts? I don't disagree. I'm a stand guy only because I need to get that thing out of here. <laughs> oh, that's true. It's convenient, right? right. Okay. I mean, I think, again, it's, it's, it's the difference between, and Robert can attest to this, it's people that are buying their forever TV, I would always mount it because I want it to hover above the stand if there is a stand. But the way we switch TVs out, it needs to be on a stand for me. So I, I would hang it if it was my forever TV. But we know we're not in the business of forever TVs, Robert. Yeah, uh -huh. We're in the business of next year. So um, yes. <laughs> the stands are, are pretty elegant now. But uh, I think, you know, mounting it's great. But, you know, but again, having a console lit for an 85-inch TV is tough. But center uh -huh. stand, so they both have center stands. You'll be fine. Yep. And for and for those who care about critical viewing, so I think this is also a discussion that that we tend to have a lot. If you care about critical viewing at all, says Classy, just buy the biggest OLED you can afford. Done. And the biggest OLED right now is the 83-inch S90C for under three thousand dollars, or for under four thousand, you have the C3 83-inch. Mm -hmm. But the question though is. Immersion versus critical viewing. This is what I say all the time. I understand critical viewing. I understand why cinema purists want it. But 
if, if critical viewing on an OLED is 100%, right? If you have a scale from zero to 100, mm -hmm. and critical viewing on an OLED is 100%, and you can get a 97 inch OLED, and that's $24,000, or a 115 inch, which is 15 inches larger for, I don't know, 15,000, whatever that TCL ends up being, it's even more immersive. I mean, at some point, is OLED's critical viewing advantage so compelling, but so small, is it still worth it for most people? What are you, because I know, Robert, you are both critical viewing, but you also sell projectors and you also go big. Mm -hmm. Uh, how does your scale go? How does your personal scale between critical viewing and immersion where the critical is just maybe a few steps lower? Well, you know, I do want both. But yes. you can get them with the high, high-end, selectively carefully chosen mini LEDs. And even, I got to tell you, uh, Sony's 98-inch X90L just dropped $1,000. It's down from $10,000 to $69.99. And it really has a nice picture. We have the 98 inch in our showroom, bright light on it, no problem. And it's got very good blacks and very good. Brian, lighting. you haven't shot the 98 inch X90L yet, have you? Yeah, I have. Oh, you have? Of course yeah. I have. Did you, did you like it? I don't remember that <laughs> at all. I must have you don't it. watch my channel, Vomo? <laughs> yeah, no, I shot it. I shot it when it came out. Oh, that must have been so long ago. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I mean, by I'm with Classy. Uh, I think clearly I didn't put a massive TV in here. I still need that critical viewing to some degree. Um, I think I gotcha. I think Sony will change my mind this year if that 85 inch local dimming is as good as we saw at the uh, secret, you know, the, that black box, oh, which is no me, longer a secret. <laughs> yeah, which uh, but it gives me that micro. It gave me enough micro contrast with the 4,000 nits that might change my mind. But uh, mm -hmm. I can't see any other LED changing my mind. I don't care how big they get. Because I can see how soft they are. And I can see, and I said this to KG, those sparkling stars. It's not about the star field crushing. It's about them sparkling. OLEDs sparkle. Even the best mini LEDs, that's a flat image back there. So mm -hmm. I need that I need that micro contrast. So I'm, 83 is big. 88 would be amazing. But, you know, it's a little expensive, Robert, at 30K for the Z series. <laughs> yeah. A little expensive. Hey, I'm happy to see we're going to get the 77Z3 also the week of April 1st. And then later, early, early, early summer, May or so, we'll have the 88-inch Z3. I'll be yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. We'll yeah. Yeah. Man. Oh, and any idea? So, you know, we're preparing for our spring event. What do I call it? The first... First contact, the first, 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 no, no, first flagship face-off. That's it. The first flagship face-off this spring. F3. F3. That's what that's what I'm going to call it. Right. It's not F3. a shootout. It's the first flagship face-off between yeah, the yeah, don't, I don't do it. Samsung S95D and the LG G4. Mm -hmm. Any guesses as to when you'll get it so we can do this event? I, and I know we're still speculating because you haven't got any confirmations, but do you have an idea when we can do this event this spring, Robert? Well, as I said earlier, it seems like it's scheduled for the week of April, Monday, April 1st. And uh, I know that's with LG, and I would imagine that's uh, probably a good Samsung estimate. as well. There's, oh, no well. Date, there's no official date from Samsung. Okay. okay. So maybe I'll tentatively plan it for that first weekend of April. Yeah. I would, we're yeah, gonna I think, get so many April Fool's comments when all of our I streams. know, <laughs> I know. No one's, what's up, Dylan? No, no one's, one's gonna, gonna believe us. I'm gonna have to announce it on April second. Otherwise, you know, I'm gonna be in, <laughs> we're I'm here. Gonna be in Can, I'm gonna be in Cancun uh, on April on April Fool's. So uh -oh. hopefully, I make it back You'll be in time. <laughs> Dylan, thank you for the super chat, my friend. If 2025 is the year of 4,000 nit TVs and likely higher. APL OLEDs in general. Should we resist the urge to get the 83-inch G4? Resist that allure. What are we expecting for 83-inch? And is it big enough to not regret not buying bigger mini LEDs? So here Dylan is already talking 2025 because of all the 2024 the is old news, baby. It's old news. I know. That G5. 3,000 nits? 
Bye bye 3000 is even though well, they haven't even arrived yet, right? It's it's already well, dead in the water, well, dead well, on arrival. What you, what you said uh, last week, FOMO, was well, but the G5 will have 4000 nets, so don't worry it about will. it. It we're, will. We're, we're, because already their their developmental prototype for the G5 is at 3700 nits, and we all know it's at 4000 by the end. I mean, they, they already have the tricks they need to pull, right? Yep. Flat panels. Uh, display completely agrees with me. They expect 4,000 nits. I mean, we're not even going to be, if anything, we're going to be disappointed <laughs> if it's not 4,000 yeah. nits. Is that, it's that so established, right? So, Dylan, back to your comment. Should you resist the 83 inch G4 Allure? How about this, Dylan? If your TV still works, resist the Allure to replace it at all, right? I always say go bigger if you're going to replace your TV. So if you have like a 65 inch, go bigger, go to the 83 inch G4. And then when you replace that, you'll be on the 97 inch G9 or 97, right? By that time, maybe that price will drop or you'll replace it with an 83 inch G9 and that will be substantially better, right? So don't like hold on as long as you can. And when you replace, you replace. So. What are your thoughts on the allure of the G4, knowing that G5s are on the corner? Like, Robert, I'm <laughs> sure you corner, get this question corner? all the time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you got all these corners, right? You got the Prime Day corner, you got oh, the Black right. Friday corner, you got the 2025. That's a big corner. How would you respond to this potential buyer? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, the G4 is going to be a pretty significant upgrade in color, in color, saturation, color volume, and peak lumens overall, white and everything. So it's going to be quite a bit brighter. It's probably not going to be 4,000 nits, of course, uh, like three. the mini LEDs might be. The high-end premium ones coming out in 2024 might get very close to that anyway. But it's going to be quite a, a significant upgrade in brightness. And the new tone mapping that now looks at it and really does a good job of analyzing it and rendering it, uh -huh. I think... It, we're in for a very big upgrade with the G4. Now, yes, mm -hmm. every year, every 12 months, once a year, the way, same way cars are, we get new models. And they mm -hmm. get sometimes a moderate enhancement in different ways. And sometimes we get big upgrades. And yeah. 2023 and 2024 appear to be two years in a row with nice upgrades. And yes, you got some inside tip on 2025, which is 13 months away. <laughs> yep, it I'm is. Already camp, only we're already camping out for April first, two thousand twenty-five. That before we, <laughs> it's something to talk about. It starts a discussion anyway. Yeah. <laughs> before we jump on to the next question, I, I have to acknowledge this little romance blooming between Apple Jelly TV and uh, Tech with KG. Like, mm -hmm. I, I keep on seeing these little hands popping up. Like, are they holding hands? Is that what this means? Moving on. <laughs> Awkward. <laughs> okay. I don't know if I'm jealous or <laughs> I don't get anything TV. like that in my videos. I mean, it's like, what's up, right? I'm like, what up? Apple Joe TV is changing the topic now. <laughs> Samsung S N A five D, and specifically, we, we talk about this amazing anti glare. Robert, have you ever seen an anti glare? that effective do you think oh. this is hype like oh i mean it works but it's just a gimmick uh, people won't notice That's the difference crazy. or is it noticeable to the point where sony and lg will follow suit in 2025 what are your thoughts on this very powerful anti-glare technology right it's a very big change and it's very it works very very well but anti-glare has side effects okay and the reduction of contrast, the reduction of um, of the rays of the blacks a little bit, you know, routinely. We have to get it in our hands and thoroughly test it and evaluate it, test and evaluate. Um, but it's very effective and it works extremely well as far as reducing glare and reflection. And if you're in a room that has direct light or reflected light, you know, with light right behind it, windows right behind it, even if they're far away, you won't see them at all. It works really mm -hmm. well. Yeah, that's insane. <laughs> yep. So right. it has very nice advantages in its need case if you need that. Well, you know, Robert, I, I, think, I think what's interesting about it too is that when the display is off, matte panels before were very muddy looking. They had a yeah. smeary look to them. This thing actually looks very premium off. 
yeah. it just looks like it doesn't look real. It's just yeah. black. <laughs> so mm. it might actually get away with looking good off as well. Yes. Maybe even better than the mirror of a glossy panel. I just thought right. it's that interesting. It doesn't. It's not really matte. It's it's almost like a felt. It feel. It doesn't feel like it, but it looks like mm -hmm. it's so black. It looks completely clean. It is There's a brand new kind of yep. technology advancement in a coating that yep. they have. They're pretty and amazing. We will have to take a look at it and evaluate it. We'll and put it outside. You both. You will both help. Yeah. With, of course. We're we'll gonna put it in a parking key. lot. Not only help, you'll be key on that. <laughs> We're gonna put it in the back of the Bronco and drive it around. Yeah, I put that on your short list, by the way. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, we'll get down there. We gotta, I gotta get down there. I have to get down there anyway before it does. Yeah. Anything. So Ken asks OLED or Mini LED LCD TV. I mean, essentially that's what he's saying. G4 mm -hmm. OLED or Mini LED. Now, I expect the prices would be very similar, right? The G4, so 83 inches, 6,500. Sony XR90, XR 85 inch, probably around that price, close to that price. So let's say cost isn't the issue. Personally, I'm so used to infinite contrast. When the, when the sizes are within two inches, I'd go with the infinite contrast. Not because the G4 has MLA per se, but most content I watch is gonna benefit from the infinite contrast. Now, the XR90 is going to have that extra Specular highlight push. I'll give it that. And I'm a specular highlight guy, but the G4 with the MLA gets me close enough. I get a go. The with contrast OLED. ratio gets you there. The, the contrast G4 ratio gets is you. a big, big upgrade. The panel is upgraded. The micro lens array is nice and upgraded, especially going up to 83 inch. The processor, the A11 AI processor, they made a big jump in this. There you have it. Thing. For motion, for AI, up, for uh, upscaling of cable and low resolution content, they really did a nice upgrade this year. It's called the A11 processor. It's AI processor. It's a big now, upgrade. Now, and so is the is, panel, and so is the MLA. So this is a big year. Now, this is us not having seen the XR90 side by side with the G4. Robert right. will have them side by side. Yes. So. No, we'll reassess when that happens, but my instinct tells me I prefer OLED at the end of the day. Yes. However, yes. and which leads us to this question, another OLED versus Mini LED. Cypher asks, thank you for the super chat, Cypher. The Samsung Q900D, 8K Mini LED TV from Samsung versus the LG Z3 8K OLED. Now, price aside, Z3, three times more. <laughs> <laughs> the 900D. I was just going to say, that's a, a little... <laughs> but Cypher, if this is your price point from 8000 to 28000 yeah, buy 24, three 000, right? call it a day. Uh, definitely <laughs> the, Z, the Z3 infinite contrast. However, now, does the Z3 have MLA, Robert? That, I, I don't remember. They said uh, yes. Is... Yeah, I'm not sure either. I, I, don't, I don't think in the 80s, eight, I don't know. You know, I need to find out. Yeah, they, find said, out. They, they said yes. Z3 is... This is the 83. Is stunning. Yeah. It is crazy and over the top. Over it's the good. Top. <laughs> the I, I'd say if, if your price yeah. could have, if your budget could handle it and you don't have to sneak it through the back door to hide it from the wife, go with the Z3 and she won't know you spent the extra 12, Plus the 14 grand. The size is insane. That's yeah, amazing. yeah, yeah, and it's an 88 inch size, right? Because it so. has, because it has, I don't know, 33 million uh, pixels. It has many more pixels. It has a lot more brightness. It's higher peak lumens by a lot. The uh, Z3, Z2, and Z3, even the Z2. Yeah, Z2 is stunning beyond belief. It yes, really is gorgeous. Love yeah. the TV. And hey, Sony Pony is here. So, Sony, I'm sure you just caught that uh, right now we are tentatively choosing OLED over the XR90. So, what do you have to say about that, my friend? But <laughs> Fatal has the follow-up. Does the mounting have any impact, negative impact on the panel? No. The answer is no. I mean, these panels are designed with the VSA mounts to be very stable. If anything, it's as secure as, as can be, right? I awesome. mount all my TVs. I, I use mounts only. A few TVs, I have to use stand mount, but I prefer to have it back mounted on my mobile TV stand. So mounting for me more often than not. And now for everyone who isn't familiar, fake marketing knit numbers are giving people FOMO. Stop worrying about the knits. 
Hey, you know Easier what? Easier said than done, my man. Easier said than hey, Sony's, <laughs> Sony's walking around 4,000 nits. Yeah, for, like, we got this grading monitor. It's 4,000 nits. And I was, oh, 4,000 nits. Is that the thing? But, you know, Kasi is right. He's right. But, unfortunately, everyone's talking nits. And Sony's not helping matters by telling people 4,000 nit content is the future. So, I yeah, got but you. I mean, but, but that and but they have a reference monitor doing this. So I, I understand what he's saying, but if we go by that, we shouldn't buy a TV. But every five years, we got to go after these new process, this, yeah. these new upgrades. They could be little, but yeah. let's go after them. I know what he's saying, but let's go. Let's get it. <laughs> no, they're, 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 this what is going on? <laughs> <laughs> this becoming a meme, man. <laughs> pink I'm hand sorry. waving. A little pink hand waving. <laughs> Oh, you guys are awesome. Hey, how long do I have you both? Uh, we're running about uh, 90 minutes now. Another. I got a few more minutes. I got to do dinner with the kiddies. With the kids? All right. Yeah. I tell everyone that for us to do these live streams, people got to skip dinner and, you know, got to skip the kids. So it's a sacrifice. Thank you so much for coming on. It's a sacrifice for our audience to jump on and say hello. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Yeah. <laughs> You know, one thing about the brightness, I did want to mention, when you have pure black, then only an OLED can do pure black. Mm -hmm. And when you take its peak lumens... But without without the crushing, all, yeah. Which is lower than some, not all of the LCDs. It appears to look brighter than it is because you can only see so many f-stops of contrast anyway. Oh, yeah. So if, you know, it, the OLED appears to, to, the, to the vision, and that's what matters, what we see, not what we measure. What we well, see. Well, well, Robert, especially now that the OLEDs are brighter than ever. So yeah, an they OLED, are. They so are. an OLED that's They're maybe more than bright enough. Yeah. So an OLED They're that's maybe three thousand nits. Good gradation. Yeah. Uh -huh. it's be interesting. Control. I got to tell you, the G4 is going to be crazy good. Let's go. Well, well, so, so an eighty-three inch. That's what the money so, down. Robert, it. <laughs> you're going to have the A ninety five L in in your in your yeah. shop. You're gonna have the G4, so we're gonna yes. compare last year's King of the TV. Let's see if the G4 can can do better. Indeed. We're gonna have streaming content, and we're gonna have the 900D. It's AI upscaling, right? We'll have our it's, opinions with some calibrators with us. Also. Oh yeah, you know, Classy is gonna be there. Classy, you know? Dwayne Davis. We're gonna have fun for sure. Yes, yes, yes. We'll get down to the bottom of it. We really will. And the and, S95D we're putting outside, and it's gonna be beautiful. <laughs> It's gonna be right in the. It's gonna be right on the sidewalk, Robert. <laughs> Boom. Hey, it, Grinch. Grinchmas asks: Is the Samsung S90C my editor's choice TV? A huge improvement over the C1. Okay, if you have the C1, don't buy the S90C. If you're deciding right between the two, then of course get the S90C. If you're getting a larger TV, let's say your C1 is 55 inch, and you go for the 77 inch. S90C, the, my favorite TV of last year, definitely go to the 77. But if you're going same size, yes, the S90C is slightly better. But I, I have a hard, well, okay, now let me ask you guys, Brian, Robert, sh if Grinchmas is going for a C1 replacement, same size, would you tell him to do it and get the S90C? Um, unless there's something wrong with the C1 or unless okay. you want an upgrade. But you don't uh -huh. need an upgrade like that because you have an OLED and it's okay. If it's got some defects or if you want a larger TV, and you're definitely right about that. Uh -huh. And the S90C is quantum dot OLED. It's newer. I mean, it's better for sure. Yeah. It's the same it's size? Moderate, it's moderate. Same. If you assume the same size, Brian, would you go C1's S90C? No. Yeah. Unless the we, we, C1 is defective. We very rarely people. recommend jumping up uh, upgrading unless it's larger or much much better, yes. and that's not the case. It is, but let's it say, is but, but let's say if you're a Gamma Lozada, looks like he's living in the tropics there, and he's got a giant sunroom. <laughs> yeah, he's outside in the water. <laughs> <laughs> right, right? He, he needs a TV that could fight the tropics. G3 or S90C in a bright room. I, I G3. I like the G3 also. G3 is really good for yeah. bright room watching. Yeah. I'm a big fan of the G3. I mean, you guys probably can't tell, but for most viewers, I normally recommend the G3 for many reasons. That most people actually appreciate the G3 for what it is. So yeah, I definitely recognize, uh, recommend that for you too, my friend. And ah, here we go. Here's another person with a C1. My C1 has 12,000 hours. I want to upgrade. If I only watch Netflix, Hulu, would a B-series LG be more than enough? 
I'm going from a 65 to 77. Ah, <sighs> if you want to watch this Netflix and Hulu, I think it's fine. I, I, I don't think you're going, going, wait, you're going up from 65 to 77. I'm, I'm hoping he's going to a 77. Yeah, I think a B1 at the 77 inch, it'll look very similar. Your larger TV, it'll appear brighter. So any differences in brightness is not going to be very noticeable. I say go for it. I, I think you'll be okay with uh, the B series 77 inch. Especially going yeah, larger. Yeah, Robert, Robert, Robert and I are both like, it's just so incremental. I don't want to ever see you go backwards. Um, but right. Yeah, I mean, I guess. Yeah, cool. Yeah, that was a very specific see if question. You can do Twelve thousand hours. You can see, you can see series. Yeah, 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 yeah. There you go, Rob. I don't want to say. Yeah, and, and the Rob, price is so similar. Yeah, the price. Good. Yeah, you're not saving much money on a B series, as we talked about before. Yeah, and it is a big upgrade too. Yeah, anyway. just call Robert. Let's see what he can do to match that B pricing. <laughs> yeah, yeah Robert. Robert, I'm goes, spending uh, Robert's money. <laughs> so Robert, the minute you said the B series, Robert just goes, huh. <laughs> yeah, it would be nice for it, but the C is a big, it's a nice upgrade. Oh, it's so a Robert. Uh, Here's is a good one. one. Now, this is a good question. 83 inch A80L, which is the TV that's behind Brian, or a 77 inch A95L. We'll start with Brian because you actually went through this exact I did decision. Decide. That you're, you have, here's your answer. 83 inch ADL and and I mean, tell Jamie why did you choose that over the king of TVs 77 inch? Well, Robert, as we know, the 83 inch ADL is special. Um, it has the A90J chassis. Yeah. It has um, XR Clear. It has all the body and sound that the A90J had. Um, you want to elaborate more, Robert? Um, I just think that 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 size and XR Clear, um, yes. I think, beats the smaller 77. I love the A95L. It's my favorite TV last year, but. If it was, if it, by answering your question, I would have it there, you know, for a room my size. So I would recommend that, Robert. Yeah. You know, a lot of it depends upon your viewing distance. Uh, the A95L is a little bit brighter also and a little more color saturated and does have a better picture. Uh -huh. But um, as we all said many, many times, if you're getting a good picture, size trumps everything. Yep. Yeah. For They're so people, similar. For most yep. people, that is the right advice. For ninety-nine percent of the people, <laughs> that is the right advice. So I think yep. the three ADL would be my choice, also. Agreed. It would be, it would hey. be my choice, and I'm a yeah. ninja. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go bigger. The eighty-three inch OLED. I I agree with Robert and Brian. All right, Leia Braun or Le Obron. Thank you for the super chat. Is the TCL QM8 2024 model way better than the 2023 model? We haven't seen the 2024 model. I don't dare say it's way better. However, I'll tell you this. If its skin tones are more accurate out of the box, for me, that's a huge win. Uh, normally, the TCL QM8, or just TCL in general, comes out of the box pushing red, pushing magenta. It's really hard to calibrate it out if you can at all. And so if 2024 ends up having more natural skin tones out of the box, that's a huge win. I'm not gonna talk about brightness so much, as that because i think tcl qm8 was an excellent tv to begin with it doesn't need to get brighter honestly but you know everyone plus four thousand nits but the qm8 is technically going to be brighter but that's not why you get it get it if it get if it has better image processing better motion processing and better skin tones that's why you would get it but i don't know yet uh we don't get that tv until summer so we'll find out but the yeah if they address the seven the seven is the big upgrade with, I like the Q7 as, a lot. The, big, the yeah. big jump is the Q7 will be like last year's QM8, maybe even a little bit better. Yeah. And last year's Q7 was great. Yeah, but this year is when they're, they're jumping to that mini LED. They're going to have a lot more zones. So the, I think the QM8 is going to be a, a, a small upgrade. The Q7 will be a bigger upgrade. Not bigger than the QM8, but it'll have more of a jump from last year's Q7. Yeah. You need four times the NIST to get two times the brightness. Yep. Technically, that is that's 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 how it is. But that's why you need four times the nits to really notice the difference, right? Yes. Okay, so let's see. We are going to wrap up right now. Thank you, everyone, for coming in. We're going to let Brian go feed his family. <laughs> Make it sound so bad. And Robert, <laughs> thank you for jumping in. I know it is late in the East Coast. I love having you here. And everyone, we are expecting our 
first flagship face-off this spring to happen early April. We'll get the exact dates for you once we confirm the TVs will be here. But it's going to be the G4 versus the A95L. How improved is the G4? And if he has the G3 there, we'll compare it to the G3 mm. versus, of course, Samsung's S95D. How much better is that matte screen? And if we can get the QN900D and play with the AI, could be fun. All right. What's happening with you next week, Brian? What are you doing? Um, actually, we had, it'll be, I have no content this week, actually. <laughs> like just, it's a vacation. You know, which is the first time since January I'm actually going to give myself the week <laughs> off just because things are hectic here. Um, so I don't force anything. But uh, we'll do a lot. We have a lot of videos planned for next week. I have to get down to Roberts at some point. I want to do like a value electronics tour of the mm -hmm. store and of the studio uh, yes. across, you know, to show the projectors. So a lot of stuff coming, and then we have TVs coming soon. So we have a lot, a lot of stuff planned. Yes, we do. And we're traveling a lot this month. We have a bunch of top secret TV events that uh, we're not allowed to mention. You know, starts with a T and ends with a Y type of thing. So. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and Robert, uh, anything you'd like? Any parting comments you'd like to leave anything interesting happening at Valley electronics any new tvs coming in i did like the roku oled from mm -hmm. sharp that review is spot mm -hmm. on i really like that we have a roku option because my parents prefer roku over anything else yeah. or my, my other set of parents right my in-laws they really like roku it's so easy to use my other par my parents are so used to the tizen you know once you're used to to a mm -hmm. certain navigation, you're not going to leave. So that's it. They're on Tizen. I can't change them out of Tizen. So, mm -hmm. how are how what is your impression of the Sharp OLED right now? Very nice. You know, we're enjoying that TV. I have it in stock and on display, and you know they're very good with their processing. So they could take a regular OLED and make it look a little better than sometimes uh, some of the competitors, just by putting in a bit of hardware and firmware. In the processing and shop is you got that on display, Robert. Now, uh, yeah, display. it's in the studio across the street. Yes, okay. yeah, all okay. right, then. And with that, everyone, thank you for showing up. Until next time, stop the FOMO. Bye, guys. <laughs>